Here we are in 2021 looking at the best laptops for Photoshop and Lightroom. Heading into 2021, we're gonna talk about specs, recommendations, and what makes some laptops good, while other ones may be more affordable, but there's those hidden things that make it not the best and most suitable laptop for Photoshop. You don't wanna miss a beat on this video. Stay tuned to the whole thing and let's dive right in. Let's get rocking. First and foremost, let's jump into what you can expect out of this video. And these are our laptops that are gonna be priced from lowest to highest. We're gonna have specs and thoughts on each laptop throughout the whole video, answering the most common questions that people have when purchasing a laptop for Photoshop or Lightroom. And all of this is possible through your feedback. So if you have questions, if you have comments, if you have concerns about any of the content in this video, please drop a comment below. I wanna hear about what you guys want to know for the next rendition of this video. I make these often, I do the, I've done 2019, I've done 2020, we're going into 2021, and the laptops are always changing, always getting better, and your feedback makes these videos as high quality as possible. And lastly, one thing I wanna mention is there are affiliate links in the description below this video. So if you're getting some value, if you wanna support the channel and you're ready to make a purchase, head down in the description below, click one of those links. If you do make a purchase through that link, we'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Let's dive right in. And the first thing that we're gonna be looking at is are these laptops capable for Photoshop and Lightroom? The more affordable ones may be less color accurate. That's what happens when you get a more affordable laptop, you're going to sacrifice some color accuracy and a few other features, which we'll talk about as we move through the video. Best bang for buck. I have found, and this may not be the most likable thing that you're going to hear first starting off this video. And don't worry, all the laptops will not be priced at this point. We're going to get some good budget-friendly laptops for you guys. But the best bang for buck usually seems to be about the $1,100 price point. And I'll talk about it when I get to that price point. Make sure you stick around till the end of the video. We're going to talk about the specs what specs are suitable for a Photoshop and Lightroom laptop. So if I don't see one that you necessarily have been considering, uh, I don't mention that one. You can still understand how to make a great purchase on a laptop for Photoshop and Lightroom. All right, let's keep moving forward. And before we move forward, remember these are my top picks. Don't be offended if yours isn't on here. Up first is the HP Pavilion with the Ryzen 5 4500U. This laptop comes with six cores and six threads. It's priced at around $569, depending on when you're making the purchase. That price may vary. And it comes with the AMD Radeon 6 graphics, eight gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, and a 15.6 inch full HD display. Now the color gamut range is unknown on this laptop. Unfortunately, I was not able to find the full color gamut info, but know that this laptop most likely, according to other laptops in its category, is gonna be sitting somewhere around the 60% sRGB and 40-ish percent percent Adobe RGB. Um, so that's one of the losses that you will take with a more budget-friendly laptop. The color accuracy is going to be slightly less, and you might get slightly less battery life out of a laptop of this price point. Now, that's not true for our next laptop up on the game, the Dell Inspiron 15. Now, this laptop is a thin and light laptop with solid battery life. It also has the Intel i3 1115G4. This comes with the Intel Ultra HD graphics and eight gigs of memory, 128 gig SSD, and 15.6 inch full HD display. Now, this laptop does struggle with the color gamut range. As you can see, 67% sRGB and 49% Adobe RGB. Um, so you got to consider that sRGB color gamut range when you are working in Photoshop. Is that important to you? Are you somebody who really, really stresses the importance of color accuracy in the photos that you're editing? To me, I personally would. And so for me, that's why if you're somebody who needs that color gamut range, I'm going to start to push you up the lot ladder a little bit as far as price is concerned. Not because I want to make more money off you. I don't. That's not the purpose. I want you to get the exact laptop that's suitable for you. But let's say you do need to purchase an affordable laptop. Let's say your budget is around 500, four to five, four to six hundred dollars right now. Okay. What you can do is you can purchase this laptop, start editing your photos, and then purchase a color gamut monitor as your budget allows. You can get a color accurate monitor like the Concept D CM2, if I'm not mistaken, CM2 or CM3. And that is a color accurate monitor from Acer for about $300. So you can get the laptop, then save a little bit more money and get the external monitor that gives you more working space and it can be a real added benefit to you. All right, let's keep moving forward here with these laptops. Next up is the MSI Modern 14. I really like this laptop. I had my hands on this 
at uh, CES 2020, um, as well as had a test unit of the Modern 15 in my office. And I really dig the build quality um, and the user friendliness of this laptop. This one comes with the Ryzen 5 4500U, has the AMD, 6 graf uh, AMD Radeon 6 graphics, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD, and a 14 inch Full HD display. Once again, we're struggling with that color accuracy. I'm hoping we can get that up for you here in just a second. But that's this is still a great laptop. I love the build quality. Um, really good user experience I had with this laptop while testing it in my studio. Next up is the MSI Modern 15. Now, this is the first laptop where we see some good, solid picking up the color accuracy. We still don't have a high Adobe RGB, but we do have a higher sRGB, which is a big improvement. Now this laptop does come with the i7-10510U, and I wanna make sure you notice the i7 here. If you get the i5 version, you will not have the color accuracy mentioned on the screen. The i5 version has the lower color accuracy, so keep that in mind. If you want the color accuracy, you need the i7 version why these manufacturers do this and create all these different models with all these different screens and specs. I don't know, it frustrates me, it confuses me, but make sure you keep that in mind and do your research when you make the final purchase. Is this the exact model I'm looking for? Does this have the color accuracy I want? So on and so forth. Okay, also you come with the GeForce MX330, eight gigs of memory, 512 gig SSD. So this would be also a great laptop for some 1080p video editing. Uh, light, light, light 4K video editing, excuse me for bumping the mic there. Um, and it's gonna be a good all around laptop. It's gonna be a good creator suite laptop. Moving forward here, we have the Acer Spin 5. This has been one of my favorite laptops that I reviewed this year. The reason I liked it um, was because of the two by three aspect ratio screen. So it's gonna be a little bit taller, even though it's a slightly smaller screen, it's a 13.4 inch screen, but because it's taller, you don't feel as cramped when you're working on the computer. Now I have heard some people comment on the light flicker, I did not experience that when I was reviewing this computer. I didn't notice that. People say it has some eye strain. So if you're somebody who's sensitive to maybe you know certain experiences on screens, then that might be a concern to you. Personally, I didn't find that a concern. I get more frustrated with a small screen, like a short screen, so that it was a taller screen, put less strain on me. All right, jumping back here, got the i7-1065G7. We have the Intel Iris Plus Graphics G7, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD. This is a three by two, like I said, 2K Corning Glass, Gorilla Glass, display. So it's a durable laptop. It's gonna have an all, it's gonna have an aluminum chassis. It's gonna be higher quality than a full HD. It's a 2K screen. And you have 100% sRGB and 79% Adobe RGB. Now you're gonna pay for it. As you see, this laptop's at about $1,100, but this is a fantastic Photoshop laptop that I definitely recommend to you, Photoshop and Lightroom alike. All right, moving forward here, next up is the Microsoft Surface laptop. Another great thin and light laptop, solid build quality. I really like the specs on this. It comes with the Ryzen 5 3580U. You have the Radeon Vega 9 graphics, eight gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, 15.6 inch full HD display and 97% sRGB and 72% Adobe RGB. Like I said, as you can see around that $1,100 price point is we're going to get kind of the best bang for buck. Um, it's not going to be, you know, in the low price point, it's not going to be in the high price point. You're going to get a better laptop as you get more expensive, but really the whole bang for buck as in, do you need that much more power for Photoshop and Lightroom? You don't need much more power than an $1,100 price point, 11 to, you know, $1,200. And so this is really the best bang for buck. As you move up the ladder, in pricing, you're going to get a laptop that's going to be capable of video editing. So you can kind of future proof your workflow, 1080p, 4k, so on and so forth. But we're talking strictly Photoshop. This is the sweet spot. All right. Next up, we have the MacBook Pro 13 M1. This laptop is to me the pinnacle of the best bang for buck, especially that the Mac OS is going to put you at around $1,300. This is pretty unheard of. Now, if you're somebody who does light Photoshop work, so for instance, somebody like uh, like my wife, she takes family photos, she edits them, I am recommending she get the MacBook Air. But if you're somebody who's dealing with multiple layers, you're doing digital painting, you're you know doing HDR photos, or you're doing big big photo processing, raw photos, things along those lines, then you're gonna to wanna to get the MacBook Pro M1. Uh, it has more of the neural engine, um, so basically that's gonna give you more graphical power. But do note, and uh, this is something we'll discuss later in the video, that having a dedicated GPU for Photoshop or Lightroom is not necessary. That's why these more lower end laptops, so to speak, though they don't have color accuracy, will still perform well. You still won't have lagginess in Photoshop. It'll still be quick, still be snappy, but the color accuracy is where you're losing 
losing some of that. Um, when you get a cheaper laptop, you're losing out in that performance. But back to the MacBook Pro M1. We have the eight cores, eight threads in the Apple M1 chip. We have the eight eight core GPU cores with the 16 gigs of neural engine, eight gigs of unified memory, 256 gigs of SSD, and a 13.1 inch retina display at 100% sRGB and 78% Adobe RGB. All right, I will continue to digress unless I move forward, so let's do so. Next up is the Acer Concept D3 Easel. This laptop to me is the creator's dream. And what I mean by that is if you're a digital artist, if you're an illustrator, if you're somebody who touches up photos in Photoshop or Lightroom, or for me, you know, making thumbnails for my videos, this guy right here, the Concept D3 Easel is a fantastic laptop. I have reviewed it. I have not done my full in-depth review on it and posted on my channel yet, but look for that on my channel moving forward. Make sure you subscribe because I'll be putting that on my channel in the future. For now, what we're looking at here is the Concept D3 Easel with the i7-10750H, the GTX 1650, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, and a 14 inch Full HD display with 99% sRGB and 79% Adobe RGB. This is a great laptop for Photoshop, Lightroom, 1080p, some light 4K video editing. It is truly a creator's dream. Um, the reason that you're having that GTX 1650 in there is it's a, you know, it's a assists your Photoshop work. It is not absolutely necessary. That's one thing that really confuses people. They do say, do I need a dedicated GPU, a graphics processing unit for Photoshop? After all, I'm dealing with graphics. That's kind of a confusing term. I really prefer the term video card or video graphics because it really explains more what that card is used for. Photoshop will usually benefit from a GPU only at about 9% and that's only during certain tasks. Otherwise, it sits pretty idle within your laptop in Photoshop and Lightroom. All right, moving forward here, we have the Asus Zephyrus G14. This is a great thin and light aluminum laptop for on-the-go workstation. You're gonna have the Ryzen uh, 7 4800HS. You're gonna have the GTX 1650, 12 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, and a 14 inch Full HD display with 91% sRGB and 60% Adobe RGB. So if you're an Asus fan, if you're a Ryzen fan, this is gonna be a great laptop for you. And like I said, we're sitting around that 11-ish $100 price point. And as you can see, there's some great laptops around that price point. Next up is the MSI Prestige 15 Full HD. We have $1,400 ish dollar laptop with the six cores, 12 threads, Intel i7 10710U, GTX 1650 Max Q, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. We have 512 gig SSD, 15.6 inch Full HD display, and 100% sRGB and 78% Adobe RGB. Really digging this laptop. It is thin, it's light, it's aluminum. It has some really, really good um, software. Uh, sorry, not software. MSI has really fine-tuned this laptop within their development process that it makes for a, a great laptop for video editing, for Photoshop work, for Lightroom work, for the Adobe Design Suite, for SketchUp, for Figma, for these design applications that need a little bit more punch. Um, this is a great laptop. I'm a fan of MSI. I... MSI's got a lot of flack over the past year or so for some of the marketing um, situations that they've walked into. Um, I have only had good experiences personally with MSI, so I recommend them with personal confidence, maybe not um, industry historical confidence that some other people might have. I've had a great experience with them. All right, moving forward here, we have the Gigabyte Aero 15. This is my favorite gaming laptop for creators. The reason being it is 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB color accurate. It has a kicking strong RTX 2060 GPU, the i7 10750H with six cores and 12 threads, and it comes in at around 1600, and I've seen it as low as 12 to 1300 on some Amazon sales. Um, it's a well-built laptop, great quality. Um, it's been my favorite laptop to recommend for somebody looking for 100% color accuracy with a lot of power that's capable of 1080p, 4K video editing, motion graphics. Um, and now for you with that color accuracy, it would make a great laptop for Photoshop and Lightroom. Definitely one um, that if I had money, if I had to put my money down today, I, I constantly am in the comment section saying, put my money down today, Gigabyte Aero 15, because it's a laptop that not many people hear about, but it is just very, very good quality. It's Pantone certified out of the factory. Um, so it's a good buy. 
Next up, we have the Dell XPS 15. If you're somebody looking for a thin and light aluminum laptop with a carbon fiber key deck, this was my daily driver for about three years. I actually started my YouTube channel on this laptop, the older iteration of it. Um, and it was old faithful to me for about three years until I upgraded to my tower. I was literally using this laptop up until about um, probably May this year. I was editing on a Dell XPS 15, all of my videos. So this laptop comes in at around 17 ish hundred dollars i7 10750h six cores 12 threads gtx 16 6, 1650 ti 16 gigs of ram 512 gig ssd comes with a 16 by 10 4k display 100 srgb and 100 adobe rgb so make a great uh on the go light durable laptop for photoshop lightroom and i know i keep mentioning video editing but that's where these laptops um, the extra money makes it worth it because if you ever end up getting into video editing, these upper end laptops are going to have the power, they're going to have the color accuracy, and they're going to have the kind of the future proof elements that you need to continue in your career. So that's the only reason I mention video editing in a Photoshop and Lightroom focused uh, video is because you only you only need so much performance in Photoshop. And then from there, you're really future-proofing yourself against other career opportunities. All right, next up, we have the Apple MacBook Pro 16. This is really, um, I would say, the pinnacle of performance and size for the Mac OS suite. Um, after this, you're really gonna be wasting your money as far as Photoshop and Lightroom is concerned. So for me personally, I would not go above the base model for this computer. I would get the i7-9750H. I would get the AMD uh, Radeon Pro 5300M. I would get 16 gigs of RAM. I might upgrade the uh, storage if I want a little bit more flexibility. Um, but you know, for $100, you can get a external drive for like four terabytes. So for me, storage is not really a worthy investment because it doesn't improve the performance of your computer, but it does give you more longevity. Say you're going on a two week shoot and you don't want to bring any extra hard drives with you. To me, that's kind of foolish. I'd bring an extra hard drive to even just back up my stuff. But you know, you could upgrade the storage to make it more expandable and more capable for longer shoots. Um, and then of course, you have the 16 inch full HD display with 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB. So answering your question, these are some common questions that I found uh, in making these videos over the past couple years in my experience as a creator on common questions that I'd run into. Um, what makes a good Photoshop laptop? Well, for me personally, what makes a good Photoshop laptop is the performance. So it's capable of running Photoshop. And that's actually not too hard to do. If you look at Adobe's um, recommendations, they really only recommend four gigs of RAM. They really only recommend an i5 processor from um, Intel. So really that's not as much of a concern because most laptops these days are capable of running Photoshop. But what really makes a good Photoshop laptop, in my opinion, is color gamut range and color accuracy. And if you have a laptop that's color gamut, has a good color gamut range and is color accurate, you're going to actually supply photos, you're going to supply edits, you're going to supply your designs, your digital art to your client or to yourself in a high quality manner because they're going to ask for this orange, let's say, well, that looks more like red, that's red. See, is that red or orange? Your client might not know if you don't have a good color accurate laptop. So, you know, you're going to supply good color accurate projects when you have good color gamut range. And that's very important to me. That's what makes a good Photoshop laptop. Um, next up, should I pick laptop X? That's a big question. People ask me if they should pick a certain laptop. Like I've just mentioned, the really the biggest thing that it comes down to, if you're have, purchasing a laptop with above the $400 price point, you really have no concerns. Um, the laptops that are being put out above the $400 price point will be capable of Photoshop. That's a pretty big blanket statement, but I've reviewed a lot of laptops and the processors they come with. And almost 90% of the time when somebody recommends a laptop that's above the $400 price point, I look at the specs, I'm like, okay, yes, that is a suitable laptop. The only reason I wouldn't pick a laptop that's around the $600 price point is color gamut range once again. So that's important. All right. Um, next is what do you have to gain by spending more money? Does it matter? It only matters if you're concerned about color gamut range. And if you want to future proof your career, if you say, Hey, I might want to be a video editor. Hey, I might want to get into motion graphics. Hey, I might want to do uh, create some Photoshop projects that have tons and tons of layers that would bog down a computer of lesser performance. That is why it would be worth spending more money. Okay. And the third question that we, uh, the fourth question that I usually get, um, and really it's more of my recommendation. Um, ben, why would you spend more? Why would you personally spend more money? And the reason I would personally spend more money is better battery life, 
So when you get a computer that's of higher quality, they usually put higher quality components in it. The components are better organized. They can fit a larger battery. So I would get a better battery life. I would get slightly higher performance because personally I'm a video editor, so I need some video editing performance and I want color gamma range. So that's why I would personally spend more money. All right, next up, let's explain some of these, um, some of the components within your computer. So first of all, the CPU. Not all CPUs are created equally. Um, I've talked a lot about this on my channel because it really is um, something that pains me um, how much the industry confuses the average consumer. As creatives, as a creative myself before really going diving headlong into this YouTube channel, I had no idea the differences in the processors. There's Y processors, there's U processors, there's H processors, there's HS processors. So what happens is you don't understand the different processor structure. And that's something that I really want to work on to get better quality videos. The problem is they're always coming out with new processors and the numbering can continues to confuse people. But really at a base level, um, what you want to do is be looking at the numbering. Okay, so what happens is you have an i5 U processor versus an i5 H processor. Which processor is going to be more powerful? The H processor is going to be more powerful. The mobile U processor has a lower TDP, and basically that means the amount of heat it produces, and that is usually a rel relative gauge on how much performance that processor can put out. Now, Again, processors are becoming more efficient, and so they're running cooler and higher performance. But at a base level, an H processor is gonna be perform better than a U processor. Same thing with Ryzen. If you have a Ryzen 4700U versus a Ryzen, 40, Ryzen 7 4800H, that H processor is gonna be great for video editing. That U processor is gonna be much better for Photoshop. Comment below if you have questions, if you're like, oh my gosh, what processor do I, what do, I do? Another way to compare them is go to userbenchmark.com. This is not a perfect test. This is not always 100% accurate, but it gives you an idea and a range on which processor will be faster. So you can plug in an i5 9300H versus a Ryzen uh, 7, uh, Ryzen 5 4600H, and it'll give you a general idea of which processor performs better. It's not a perfect science. There's a lot of people who complain about those benchmarks and say they're not accurate, but it's really just to give you a gauge to know which is better. Okay, I've gone on long enough about that, but I hope that helps you understand the processor situation without digging too deep into the weeds. Next up, is GPU important for Photoshop? No, GPU is not important. On all of my tests, if you go through all the computers I reviewed and you look at the component usage, when I report the component usage in Photoshop, it's anywhere from two to 9% tops. And that depends on the task you're running in Photoshop. Some of the tasks require 9% of the GPU, but it just that's that's almost no percent of the GPU when you ask me because it's not benefiting you that much in Photoshop. So do you need a dedicated GPU graphics processing unit in Photoshop? No, you do not. It's not a concern. However, if you're going to be somebody who wants to future-proof your career against video editing, against motion graphics, yes, a graphics processing unit is most important because the graphics processing in video and motion graphics does need that GPU. All right, next up, RAM. Eight gigs works, but 16 is the best. That's my personal opinion. The reason being is when you're working as a designer or when you're working as an editor, you are most likely using different programs at the same time. You might be using Camera Raw alongside of Photoshop and even Lightroom. I know a lot of people's workflows are like that. And then you might actually be laying out your photos in a nice like quality uh, produced catalog inside of InDesign. So if you're running four programs at the same time, 16 gigs of RAM is really gonna give you a computer that does not lag, that does not bog down, and does not bottleneck. Like I said, eight gigs is my base recommendation. I think it's great, it's a great place to be. And then 16 gigs is the sweet spot where you'll be able to do good multitasking. Storage, finally, SSD versus HDD. Uh, this is solid state drive versus hard disk drive. Uh, in today's day and age, solid state drives are becoming so much more efficient and affordable. It's really the way to go. Um, basically, a solid state drive has no moving parts. A hard disk drive has a moving uh, disk, an arm and an eye that reads your information, whereas a solid state drive reads the information straight onto the drive, no moving parts, and then you can erase off of it, format it, so on and so forth. Um, solid state drive is my recommendation. They're more reliable and they are much, much faster. Okay, next up is a quick quiz. Should I pick the Microsoft Surface Laptop 2 with its i7-8650U or the HP Pavilion with its Ryzen 5 4500U? $1,300 versus $565. And in the head-to-head -head benchmarks of these two processors, you're gonna see the HP Pavilion outperform the i7-8650U. 
outperform the Microsoft Surface laptop with its i7-8650U. And that's why it's important to do some processor comparison. That's why it's important to maybe pop those into user benchmark just to get some base level ideas and differences. Um, because just because of the price of the laptop is substantially more expensive does not mean that it merits the price and gives you hence more performance. That's why it's very important to understand the differences between laptop processors and specs. And that's why you're watching this video. Um, next up, uh, what is the best, what, what improves, excuse me, what I'm trying to say is, what improves when you get a more expensive laptop? The color accuracy, the build, the build of the materials, the thin and light uh, elements of it, and the battery life. So as you spend more money, your computer is gonna become more color accurate, it's gonna use it better build materials, it's gonna be thinner and lighter, it's gonna have better battery life. So that's kind of the, um, bell curve of improvements of laptops from a very uh, budget-friendly laptop all the way up to a more expensive laptop. And then once again, as I say, why would I spend more? I'd spend more for color accuracy, battery life, and build quality. As promised, here are the Photoshop Puget System scores of all the laptops I reviewed over the past 12, 6 to 12 months. Um, as you can see here, I'll leave this up on the screen and allow you to kind of look through and see where a laptop you might be considering. It sits on this chart. Um, I'm sorry if it's uh, kind of small, if you're on a phone, just kind of maybe full screen it and you can look through and see where everything sits. Um, now, the one thing that I really want to talk through uh, as we're finishing up this video is just the importance of understanding um, what you're buying. And I have multiple videos on my channel about the tech specs of your computer. And so what that is, is it's videos about what is a CPU and how does it work? What is a GPU? What is RAM? Um, is RAM important? Is GPU important? Is a CPU important? How does it work? How does it interact with different um, programs such as Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve? If you go to my channel and go under the, uh, it's called Don't Tech With Me. That's the series that I've built to help you understand every component within your laptop because we are creatives. We don't necessarily care so deeply about the laptop. We just want it to work. Am I right? And so. I am a creative who's made it my mission to understand how the laptop works and to explain that to you in a simple, effective way so that you can spend less time worrying about all the different weird intricacies of the specs, get the laptop you need, and be on your way as a creator getting the specs and the performance you need without all the humbug. And so that's really my passion on this channel is to deliver to you content that brings you values, brings you value, gets you on your way, and helps you make the right choice. If you want those videos, you can click or tap the screen over here for more videos like this one to help you with your decision to buy a laptop. And again, if you're curious about the exact pricing or availability of any of the laptops that we've talked about as we're going through this video, you can head down in the description below, click one of those links. That's all we have today. I'm Benji Kaiser. Keep editing, keep designing, keep creating, and I'll see you here in the next video.